In today's video, we're going to be working on Ziggy's key gen me number zero. Let's open up our virtual machine. So let's go ahead and pop it into PID. Uh, it says that it was compiled using MASM32 or TASM32. Let's use dependency walker to see what imports it um, uses. And it makes calls to user32.dll. Here are some of the function calls. And it makes use of kernel32. And those are the functions it calls. So let's pop it into IDA. All right, now that that's loaded in, let's run the program and see how it behaves. Prompting us for our name. Let's type in P. It says name must be at least five characters long. Well, five characters. Okay, let's try one, two, three, four, five as the password. Hit register. We get that um, Windows message box. There's a few different approaches we can take. We can look for that message box. We can look for a string length call, which is what we're going to do today. We see the string length call there. So let's enter into that. Click on it. Hit X. And this is where it's called. It's called three times, two times from the dialog function. Um, and one from this unknown function. So let's go into that. Let's scroll up. Let's see what calls this function. So we'll hit X, hit OK. We scroll down, we see an unregistered and we see registration accepted. Um, and we see an invalid registration details. All of this happens as a result of whatever is returned from this unknown function. So let's rename that to validate key. Ah, let me spell it right. So we see an or and then a jump if not zero. So if this returns anything but zero, we're going to jump. If it's not zero, it's going to go this way. So we want it to return zero. So it takes this path. Let's figure out what happens inside of this validate key function. We see a string length call and it's being compared to five. We know that our username must be at least five characters long. So this is probably our username. Okay. Um, we see two strings here. One is pointing to fit. The second one is just a buffer. So let's go back and press escape. Mm, we're moving the result of string length into this um, integer value. Let's double click on that. And it's it's set to zero. So we're going to rename this to username underscore length. Scroll down a little bit. We see a hard coded, hard coded value being um, moved into EDX. Scroll down. It appears there's a little loop here. We're subbing ECX. Scroll down. And we see a string comparison, which makes sense. Whatever, whatever result we get, we're passing it directly to the function that called this function. Um, so one of these has to be the correct value. So we'll double click on this and it's just a buffer. Let's click X on it and see where it's called from. We see it's called from that dialog function. So let's double click on that. This is probably going to be um, the key we entered since we're calling, um, we're using it with get dialog item text. So let's go back and we'll hit N to rename it. We're going to name it entered serial. Let's hit escape to go back. That, that makes this logically the correct serial. Hit OK. We see another odd value um, and it's used to concatenate with the correct serial so scroll up correct serial starts with fit so we know that the serial needs to start with fit dash 
and then there's a string concatenation with this this let's double click on that and it's just a string buffer so let's go back and <clears throat> we see we see it used with uh, s print f that takes a, a destination buffer the format string and we're passing whatever the result of whatever um, is stored in EAX at this time. We don't know that yet. Let's scroll up and see how EAX gets its value. We see multiple calls to it. But at this point, we have enough information to just rip the algorithm out. Um, okay, so let's start from the top. I'm going to right click, go into text view. So we start this function off by loading a pointer to our username into EAX. We're moving it into here. So let's name that to P name buffer since it's pointing to our username. The next thing we're doing is we see a push that fits string, the correct serial which at this point is just an empty buffer. So, and then we see a string copy. So we're copying fit into our buffer. So at this point, correct serial um, is equal to blank. Then we're doing correct serial plus equals fit dash. To hit okay. Then we see a call to string length using our username. We're moving our string length into a, a, a variable called username length. We're comparing it with five. And if it's less than five, we're taking this jump, which just returns one. So let's rename that to bad name length. Hit OK. Now we're <clears throat> loading this unknown value into EBP. Let's double click on that. And it's just an unknown, unknown value. We see it's right under our name pointer. Let's go back. Now we see we're loading a pointer to our username length into EDI. We see a whole bunch of registers being pushed onto the stack. This hard-coded value being moved into EDX. And then we see EBX being loaded with EBP minus four, EBP minus four. And we know that EBP is pointing to this value here. So let's go back, double click on it, minus four. The minus four is pointing to that pointer to our name buffer so it's looking something like this ebx is equal to username but it's just a pointer to it so we could just do something like that. Now we see EBX, it's being referenced and moved into EDI. We just established that EBX is pointing to our username, so we're moving our username into EDI. So again, EDI is equal to username. Scroll down, now we're moving EDI minus four into ECX. So this is just our username. So let's go into it. Minus four would be here. So we're moving our username length into ECX. So ECX is equal to username length. We're subbing username length 
minus equals three, hit okay. And then we see a little loop here. Let's figure out what's going on inside of it. We're, <clears throat> we're getting four bytes um, pointed to at by EDI, which we know EDI is pointing to our username, moving it into EAX. So we're grabbing four characters from username. Then we're moving EBP minus eight. Where's EBP set? EBP is pointing to our username as well. We're moving EDX into it. Oh, wait, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back up. Okay, so now we see an exclusive or with the four characters pointed to at by username with EDX. EDX is pointing to this hard-coded value, so this is probably our encryption key. And we're incrementing EDI which is pointing to username so we're moving to the set the second character in our username so let's do something like uh username i and we're only grabbing four characters so we're going to do i plus four and then right here we're going to do I plus plus and then let's comment this out we're gonna do encryption we're gonna name it buffer exclusive or equals the four the four characters pointed to at by username username I to I plus four Hit OK. And then we're decrementing ECX, which is our string length. We, we decremented it by three right off the bat. So here's another one, which is, which is total to four. So ECX minus minus. If uh, ECX is not zero, we do it all over again. So what we're going to do the second time around, our username is pointing to the second character all the way up to four characters. So it's second character, third character, fourth character, and fifth character. We're doing that same encryption buffer thing where we're exclusive oring uh, the previous result with the next four characters. We're moving, we're incrementing EDI, which is pointing to the character in our username. We're decrementing ECX, which is the counter. And then we keep doing that until um, ECX is zero. And then we move the result into EBP minus eight. EBP is pointing to, where's EBP pointing? To this unknown value here. We're subtracting it by eight, which takes us EBP minus eight. Hold on, let's go back. Yeah, so EBP is pointing here. We're subtracting it by eight. So subtract this by eight. We're going to point at 30 here. Yeah, I guess we're pointing it to here. Makes doesn't make much sense to me. But then at the end of this, we're moving it into EAX. And then we're pushing EAX into this sprintf function, which ends up going into here. So this is the second part to our serial. So we're gonna rename that to serial um, algorithm result. Hit okay. And there you have it. That's we have we now have all the parts to create a key gen. I've done that in Python. So let's go over the code. I'm declaring an encryption buffer, setting it equal to that hard-coded value. I'm prompting the user for a username. 
I'm declaring a variable, setting it equal to fit. Um, there's a variable named user length, which is just the length of the username. I'm declaring a, a variable named minimum user length is equal to five. I didn't have to do that, but I think it looks makes the while loop look cleaner. So it's while username length is less than minimum user length, have them enter a new username. Scrolling down, I'm declaring a variable named i. I'm setting it equal to zero. This is going to be our EDI value. It's just going to be used to iterate through our username. This is where things get a little hacky. The exclusive or value, which is the four characters we're using to um, exclusive or with that encryption buffer key. Okay, so the way I did it was I used um, this for C and username. So we're gonna loop through the username, starting with I, which is set to zero, all the way up to I plus four. Um, for each character, we're passing it to this ORD value, which gets the ASCII value of it. We're converting that into hex. Um, then we're stripping off the zero X that um, Python adds to it. We're um, typecasting it into a string. And then this whole thing returns a list. This is list comprehension. So um, iterating through it backwards, storing that um, while passing it to join and storing that in this variable named exclusive or value. The reason why I'm iter um, iterating backwards, little andy, little andian, andian? I don't know how to say that. <coughs> but Intel is little andianness. So if I don't do it that way, we're going to get incorrect values. All right, so I'm decrementing the username by four. I'm doing that algorithm here. And if username length is still greater than zero, I repeat the process. And then I print out the, while well, I concatenate the serial with the algorithm result, and then I print it out. So say if I were to CD into my desktop, run Python, ziggy-0.py enter in something like please like and subscribe copy this value run the program again paste it in and registration accepted let's try something else Hit register. Oh, let me trim off those empty characters. And it was accepted. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate. Patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos. And peace out.